The African Land Forces Summit is the single largest gathering of the African senior military leaders from across the African continent. It is a forum that affords participants the opportunity to engage themselves in a variety of issues affecting the continent. The summit was inaugurated in Washington, D.C. in 2010, with its first edition holding from 10th to 14th May of the same year. Since its inception, the summit has been held in four different countries. The outcome of the 2017 edition in Malawi necessitated the hosting of a 2018 edition by Nigeria. After due consultation by the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukuru Yusuf Buratai, the Commander-in-Chief, President Muhammad Buhari, gave approval for the summit to be hosted in Nigeria. The Nigerian Army, in conjunction with the United States Army Africa, then co-hosted the sixth edition of the African Land Forces Summit in Abuja, Nigeria from Monday 16 to Thursday 19th April 2018. The event has in attendance senior military leaders from nations across Africa and beyond, converges to discuss and develop cooperative solutions and improve on trans-regional security and stability. Prior to the summit, series of planning conferences were held to make firm decisions on vital issues for a successful summit The summit with the theme, Unity is Strength, Combating Africa's Security Challenges, was designed to afford military leaders the opportunity to strengthen existing relationships, develop new ways of tackling security challenges in African continent, and further facilitate cooperation. In his opening remarks, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tokuro Yusubu Ratai, stated that the 6th African Land Forces Summit was aimed at achieving a grand synergy for Africa and her allies. He recalled that the fifth edition held in 2007 at Lilangwe in Malawi provided an avenue for the United States Army Africa and other partners to collaborate and address African security problems. General Buratai expressed optimism that the collective action and inaction of the participants in the summit will have impacts on the efforts to ensure safety and stability of individual countries, Africa, and the world in general. Let me, at this point, appreciate the federal government of Nigeria for approving to host uh, this summit. Our president, commander-in-chief, President Muhammad Buhari, as a strategist, knows the importance of military alliances and corporations. Hence, the approval to hold this summit. The sixth Africa Land Forces Summit being opened today is aimed at achieving a grand strategy for Africa and our allies. Drawing from this, I want to specifically thank the government of the United States and the United States Army Africa for giving Nigeria and the Nigerian Army the right to co-host the sixth summit. The African Land Forces Summit is the single largest gathering of African senior military leaders and other senior army chiefs from across the globe, especially within the African continent. The forum affords the African countries the avenue to share experiences on global terrorism and to forge common approach to combating transnational threats and crimes, such as violent extremism, organized terrorism, armed 
proliferation and piracy, amongst others. The summit also affords military leaders the opportunity to interact with the aim of strengthening existing relationships and developing new ones. I have no doubt that, the, that this summit will present us with ideas and ways to tackle our numerous challenges bordering on security and military professionalism. Terrorism, proliferation of small arms and light weapons, piracy and human trafficking remain the major security challenges facing the African continent with rippling effects across the globe. Activities of violent extremist organizations such as the Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab, Al-Saruddin, and Al-Qaeda in the Maghrib have continued to keep our security forces busy and committed to ensure safety of lives and properties. In this regard, I am delighted to inform you that Nigeria has recorded significant progress in terming the excesses of the Boko Haram terrorist group. I therefore urge all of us to bring to bear our wealth of experience and expertise to provide solutions to our security problems. I implore everyone here to engage in deliberate discussions that will explore viable avenues towards forging friendships and alliances that will facilitate us to surmount our challenges. Let me, at this point, reaffirm the Nigerian Army's unflinching commitment to take lead roles in Africa towards ensuring peace, security, and sustainable development. On this note, I wish to convey our desire to continue to partner with our allies and inform you that the Nigerian Army training institutions are open to all interested countries who desire to train their personnel here in Nigeria. Once again, I welcome you all to Nigeria and wish you fruitful and rewarding deliberations. Thank you and God bless. Also at the summit, the Church Defense, U.S. Embassy in Nigeria, Mr. David Young, called for more alliance. Today, we can achieve what alone we cannot, a fact that is all too familiar to, the, in, to all the leaders in this room. We face complex, ever-evolving threats across the continent, from the rise of terrorist networks to the growing problems created by changes in the world's climate. Recognizing that no single country can address these challenges alone, alliances and partnerships have emerged. From the six Amazon countries fighting alongside Somali units to defeat Al-Shabaab, to the combined efforts of Senegal, Nigeria, Ghana, Mali, and Togo to ensure a peaceful handover of power in the Gambia last year. It is our hope that through events such as this summit, we can form communications today that will allow for continued sh such shared efforts in the future. In order for us to be our strongest, we have to come together out of our diversity to make a more unified whole. The Vice Chief of Staff, U.S. Army, General James McConville, in his remark, stated that Although we came from different places, diverse cultures, and we speak a variety of languages, we are united in our need to work together. He enjoined participants to deliberate actively and come up with valuable ideas that will enhance trans-regional synergy. The only way we can defeat our adversaries and threats is by working together and forming strong alliances and partnerships that will withstand the test of adverse and challenging circumstances. Although we all come from different places, diverse cultures, 
and we speak a variety of languages, we are united by our need to work together. That's why we are here this week. And this is going to be a great opportunity to foster a candid exchange of ideas, to develop new relationships, and to learn lessons from our partners in the region. There is so much experience in this room, and I know we will all benefit from the discussions we will have this week. The solutions we develop and the relationships we build this week will improve security and stability, not only in Africa, but the rest of the world. So I look forward to working with you all this week and into the future. Thank you again for all being here. We are very proud to be here with you today. Thank you. Why declare the summit opened? The Chief of Defense Staff, General Gabriel Olonishaki, advised African militaries to learn from the Nigerian military in assuring national and regional security at all times. It is important to state that the deliberations and interactions during this summit will showcase the relevance of the experiences shared and solutions proffered to tackle the common challenges we are facing in securing our individual nations and the world at large. The benefits that could be derived from the enhanced cooperation and mutual collaboration through the African Land Forces Summit are enormous. No doubt, this would increase the capacity and competence of African armies to provide security throughout the continent. The knowledge gained and ideas shared at this summit will be instructive in solving African problems which are better comprehended and managed by Africans. This alludes to our complex scenario in a continent of over one billion people with more than 2,000 spoken languages. This diversity and the growth of regional and transnational violent extremist organizations have therefore buttressed the need for building military partnership across the continent through collaborations that promote collective security and an integrated approach to handling regional security issues. In this light, it will be apt to say that we are all here to provide solutions and develop capabilities which would ensure that our armed forces remain professional, ready, and efficient for the variety of scenarios which the battle space throws up. Violent extremism, terrorism, human trafficking, proliferation of small arms and light weapons, as well as piracy, have continued to pose security challenges to our individual and collective countries. As the global security environment continues to be volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous, the chiefs of army staff of our various countries, including our partners, need to develop and adopt a unified approach to confronting these challenges. Tackling security challenges such as those highlighted above requires a comprehensive decision and unified approach by all stakeholders. Therefore, there is a need for sincere and active collaboration between all stakeholders to strangulate sources of funding, weapons, and groups that pose or have the potential to pose security challenges at national, regional, or continental levels. This collaboration can only be possible if we forge lasting friendships that will accommodate common interests and aspirations to safeguard Africa. The Armed Forces of Nigeria has gained tremendous success and the fight against Boko Haram. These successes were largely due to the evolution of various operational concepts and techniques backed by unflinching support from the government 
and the populace in checkmating the indigenous techniques of the terrorists. I therefore encourage more collaboration among our various countries in terms of joint training, exchange programs, exercises, and intelligence sharing. It is therefore my privilege to declare African Land Forces Summit 2018 open. Thank you and God bless you. Participants drawn from 43 African countries, the United States and other allied countries discussed some key topics during the summit during plenary session. These include command and control in the African operational equipment, protecting the populace while countering violent extremist organizations, and solving sustainment challenges gaps. Major General Lucky Irabo was among the speakers during the plenary session. Command and control remains the most important uh, architecture when, of course, you want to win uh, any, any war at all. Of course, logistics stands as number one, but next, of course, remains the command and control architecture that you may define for a, a given environment. And so, uh, I also felt that, you know, for us to look at command and control, we must look back in history to the wars that were fought in Africa, and then, of course, to for during, of course, the pre-colonial era as well as the colonial era, and even the post-colonial era. And of course, there are notable individuals that have had to, you know, um, command operations even during these uh, various era that I've just. The summit also featured military demonstration exercise showcasing the Nigerian Army capability in special operation using 